Today's status report for the 8th of March 2017, we're going to quickly go over the most important sections, but I do recommend as always that you read the status reports in full for the most amount of information that they contain. At the end, I'm going to bring up a few concerns the community have had in the comment section. This status report was slightly late due to the brand team work on recording the next Dev Spotlight videos for Victor Kostik, the team's animation lead. So it will be interesting to see some of the new animations being worked on, hopefully in this new QA video. Brian then goes on to say, as many of you have noticed, we went ahead and re-enabled the spawning of vehicles on stable branch servers. We've gone through a good deal of iteration on these over the last few months on Experimental Branch. While we've been able to tackle a great deal of the issues discovered in the testing on Experimental and Stable Branch, there is still obviously critical issues with the existing implementation. With vehicles being a pillar of Daisy's experience, and one that the team are not happy with in their current state, the push to Staple was a measured decision upon the limited number of active players on Experimental and Stable Branch. As you guys know, if there's not enough players on Experimental Stable Branch for the team to collect data and find those issues quick, they're probably going to just push them to Stable, which is what they've done. Hopefully, fixing these issues quicker. With that said, any time now there should be a new experimental update coming to Stable, which should hopefully address characters or infected not dying under certain conditions, e.g. unconscious players, and headshots. Disappearing bodies of unconscious players when disconnecting. In addition to these, we are still investigating several issues related to the reintroduction of vehicles onto Stable Branch, such as, but not limited to, server performance degradation, potentially related to vehicles, and reports of invisible players. Brian then goes on to say it is critical to understand that poor server performance can be the root cause of a significant amount of issues that you as players encounter. While this may be concerning, as we are approaching the limit of what we can do with 0.61 and the legacy technology, the beta milestones and introduction of new technology on the infusion side opens up a lot more opportunities for us. Not to mention being able to move the server away from having to track two physics systems, which in and of itself is very resource intensive. This week, Peter talks about the new melee combat system and how it behaves in internal testing. Also, the new damage system has already been deployed, and it's used exclusively with the new character. Provided straightforward configuration and clear damage outcome from a hits per weapon, properly affected by clothing, Peter bets the new melee combat will prove to be worth the wait, and it will yield satisfying results for us, and together with other systems which are being worked on, will create the best possible overall experience. We also have a nice bit of information from lead animator Victor, as the player actions are now working in a new system with new scripts, we are changing some of the old one-time animations to looping ones. We have also started to work on more unique animations for interesting actions. To name a few, we have recently created stitching, animal skinning, starting a fire, washing hands, and other animations to improve overall experience when interacting in the world. Of course, there is more information on the status report that I recommend you read in full for yourselves, and I'll leave a link in the description below. But let's move on to some community concerns, and something that gets brought up quite a lot every single stats report highlight by different people, a lot of whom are accepting the fact that it's going to take a while to implement these new technologies, but at the same time are also bringing up why we're not seeing more screenshots and videos of these new technologies. With that, I do agree that maybe we should see some more screenshots and videos to keep interest high, as that is very important at this stage in development with DayZ, I believe. There is also the fact that we've got to keep in mind, as I'm sure the team would be giving us an inside look via pictures and videos more so, if it would be at that stage. Remember back with Wolves? Brian recorded himself internally for the community. Wolves in action, way before they were implemented, even on Experimental Branch. With that being said though, I think it would help the community's concerns, if we could possibly get some flybys of the new wooded areas, or some quick short animated clips of new animations. Also, the Trello has been quiet for some time now, but there are some new screenshots of the Bison and attachments, which are on screen now for those that didn't know. And of course, guys, I'll always try to answer the community's concerns in the best way I possibly can. So comment below and I will get back to you. I have been and always will be a very strong supporter of Daisy and the team. And though myself and many others do respect the time they put into these status reports every two weeks, sometimes visual information and eye candy can help to keep community morale up more than anything else. And I'm sure we'll get that precious eye candy soon, as I know the team would be giving it us if it was ready. So thank you very much for joining me on this week's status report highlight. Some very good information indeed. Remember, you can get in touch with me in the comments below if you have any concerns. If you enjoy the content I make, please consider subscribing and giving a like, as it helps the channel out a lot. And I'll see you peeps next time.